this video, we shall be discussing lust. What is a believer supposed to do when inappropriate sexual desires spring up out of nowhere? No doubt, we know they aren't godly stirrings in our flesh and that carnality only leads to spiritual death or a separation from God's presence, but coming out of that stronghold of lust has always been quite a challenge for many. 1 John 2 verse 16 amplified. It says, For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things. These do not come from the Father, but are from the world. Our focus in this scripture is lust of the flesh, which is an inordinate lust or cravings by a man or woman towards people that they're not married to. In the context of a holy matrimony between a man and his wife, desiring after your spouse is not a sin because this is a design by God who created marriage and sex in the first place. However, desiring someone that we are not married to according to God's purpose is simply a lust of the flesh that has to be addressed because, like a thief, it only sneaks in to steal and destroy all that is pure and beautiful. And how do we address this sin? By simply obeying God's instructions in Romans 8 verses 12 and 13. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The answer is to lean absolutely on the Holy Spirit and be ready to move by His exact leading per time, because He alone knows how we can win over the lies of the devil. For instance, He will always lead us to a place of word study, prayer, worship, or godly discussions that will wake us up from our temptations and make us spiritually minded once again. Let's see some biblical examples where this lust of the flesh that must be conquered by the power of the Holy Spirit was allowed to dominate unchecked. Amnon was a son of King David, an honorable man, but all of a sudden, by the devil's temptation, influence and wiles, he started to lust after his sister. By all means, he decided that he had to sleep with his sister and he went to strange lengths to fulfill that desire. This story is captured in 2 Samuel 13 verses 1 to 17 amplified. It happened afterwards that Absalom, the son of David, had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, her half-brother, the son of David, was in love with her. Amnon was so frustrated because of his half-sister Tamar that he made himself sick, for she was a virgin and Amnon thought it impossible for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very shrewd, cunning man. He said to Amnon, Why are you, the king's son, so depressed morning after morning? Will you not tell me? And Amnon said to him, I am in love with Tamar, my half-brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, Go to bed and pretend you are sick, and when your father David comes to see you, say to him, just let my sister Tamar come and serve me food, and let her prepare it in my sight, so that I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please, let my sister Tamar come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, so that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent word to the house for Tamar, saying, Go now to your brother Amnon's house, and prepare some food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was in bed. And she took dough and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and baked them. She took the pan and dished them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have everyone leave me. So everyone left him, except Tamar. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom, so that I may eat from your hand. So. Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the bedroom to her half-brother Amnon. When she brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said, Come, lie with me, my sister. She replied, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. As for me, how could I get rid of my shame and disgrace? 
and you, you will be considered one of the fools in Israel. So now, just speak to the king about taking me as your wife, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and since he was stronger than she, he violated her and lay with her. Then Amnon became extremely hateful toward her, for his hatred toward her was greater than the love which he had for her. And Amnon said to her, Get up and get out. But she said, No, because this wrong of sending me away is worse than the other that you have done to me. But he would not listen to her. Instead, he called his young man who was his personal servant and said, Now throw this woman out of my presence and bolt the door behind her. After fulfilling that lust, suddenly he hated her because she reminded him of how vile he had become. Eventually, he lost his life for this reason because Tamar's brother ensured that he got his revenge for the shame his sister went through at Amnon's hands. Another person of royal lineage who was also captured by lust was King David. For David, it was the sight of Bathsheba's naked body that stirred him up and aroused the lust of the flesh in him. He was already married, so could have chosen to become intimate with his wife to quench that hunger in his flesh for sex. But he chose Bathsheba instead, because he had his eyes fixed on her. 2 Samuel 11 verses 1-5 to Amplified says, Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all the fighting men of Israel, and they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his couch and was walking on the flat roof of the king's palace, and from there he saw a woman bathing, and she was very beautiful in appearance. David sent word and inquired about the woman. Someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. When she came to him, he lay with her. And when she was purified from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent word and told David, I am pregnant. Eventually, that single incident became a stain on his history as a friend of God and as a king. It also caused murder, brought regrets and consequences that were far-reaching, and a great damage to his family. The reason why the lust of the flesh must not be allowed to linger without checking it out immediately is that it can take over a person till he or she literally loses all sense of what is moral, right, and sensible. In no time, it dominates not just the flesh, but also the mind, continuing a cycle of never-ending bondage till it brings ruin and emptiness. Lot's daughters were also held under its destructive grip. Genesis 19 verses 30 to 38 Amplified says, Now Lot went up from Zor and lived in the mountain together with his two daughters, for he was afraid to stay any longer in Zor, and he lived in a cave with his two daughters. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is aging, and there is not a man on earth available to be intimate with us in the customary way, so that we may have children. Come, let us make our father drunk with wine, and we will lie with him so that we may preserve our family through our father. So they gave their father wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he did not know when she lay down or when she got up, because he was completely intoxicated. Then the next day the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drunk with wine tonight also, and then you go in and lie with him, so that we may preserve our family through our father. So they gave their father wine that night also. And the younger got up and lay with him, and again he did not know when she lay down or when she got up. Thus both the daughters of Lot conceived by their father. The firstborn gave birth to a son and named him Moab from father. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also gave birth to a son and named him Ben-Ami, son of my people. He is the father of the Ammonites to this day. How can we forget King Solomon who was fervently serving God one moment and by the next moment totally sinking in sin? King Solomon manifested such an extreme symptom of the lust of the flesh by marrying 700 wives and in addition also got for himself 300 concubines. How could one single man have such lustful desires? 1 Kings 11 verses 1 to 8 Amplified says, 
Now King Solomon defiantly loved many foreign women along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the very nations of whom the Lord said to the Israelites, You shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you. For the result will be that they will turn away your hearts to follow their gods. Yet Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away from God. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not completely devoted to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the fertility goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the horror, detestable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did evil things in the sight of the Lord, and did not follow the Lord fully, as his father David had done. Then Solomon built a high place for worshipping Cheshmash the horror, detestable idol of Moab, on the hill which is east of Jerusalem, and for Molech the horror, detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. And he did the same for all of his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. It is obvious that because he never dealt with the initial decisions and the lust, he ended up going deeper into an endless dark pit. As for Samson, his great undoing was his lust for women. We see this in Judges 16 verses 4 to 15 amplified. It says, After this he fell in love with a Philistine woman, living in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. So the five lords or governors of the Philistines came to her and said to her, Persuade him, and see where his great strength lies, and find out how we may overpower him, so that we may bind him to subdue him. And each of us will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and with what you may be bound and subdued. Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh cords or tendons that have not been dried, then I will be weak and be like any other man. Then the Philistine lords brought her seven fresh cords that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men lying in ambush in an inner room, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he broke the cords as a string of tow breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, See now, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please, tell me truthfully how you may be bound. He said to her, If they bind me tightly with new ropes that have not been used, then I will become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in the inner room. But he snapped the ropes off his arms like sewing thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, Until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me truthfully with what you may be bound. And he said to her, If you weave the seven braids of my hair with the web and fasten it with a pin, then I will become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks or braids of his hair and wove them into the web. And she fastened it with the pin of the loom and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the pin of the weaver's loom and the web. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. Lust and desire blinded Samson till he lost so much of his glorious future on the laps of Delilah. Let us pray. Thank you, faithful Father, for your plans for me that are good and not evil. Thank you for every provision that you have made for me to live far above the dominion of sin and lust. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I shall not live under the influence and control of the spirit of lust. Rather, I will submit my flesh and mind to your Holy Spirit every time, so as to live triumphantly. Amen.